Hello, in this session, we are going to look at an introduction to IAM users. So, uh, like we already discussed, we can make use of this IAM service, which is your identity and access management to give access to other users, right? So in this session, we'll talk a bit more on what your IAM users are and how it works. So basically, we will look at an introduction to your IAM users. Now, in the last session, we have looked at some of the benefits or some of the features that are provided by your IAM. So we can use IAM to give us shared access to the AWS accounts. We can use it to control granular permissions to the users. We can use it to set up MFA, we can use it to secure applications which are running on EC2 instances and some other uh, features that we have. Now in this session, we will just look at an uh, introduction to IAM users will understand what your IAM users are. Once again, before we start off with this session, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. So let's get started with this. Now, you can give access to your AWS account to specific users. So basically at any point, if you want to give access to other users to access your AWS account and you can provide them with very specific permissions as to what resources they can access in your account, what services they can access in your account, all those things can be controlled by making use of this IAM service. So let's say we have an AWS account and now we have different different users. You can give access to the same AWS account so that multiple users can access the same AWS account. Now, to create your users, there are a couple of options that are available. One is obviously using the IAM service, the Identity and Access Management service. And we also have this service called AWS IAM Identity Center. So earlier this service was called as SSO and now they have renamed it as IAM Identity Center. We can use that also to create your users or federate existing users to uh, log in to the AWS account. So we will be looking at your AWS IAM. So the main difference between AWS IAM and AWS Identity Center is IAM users are granted long-term credentials to your AWS resources while users in the IAM Identity Center have temporary credentials that are established each time the users sign into AWS. So with your AWS IAM, what happens is we will be having credentials that we will be generating and these credentials are long term unless you don't go and change it or unless you don't go and delete it, the credentials will remain the same. Whereas with your IAM Identity uh, Center, Every time you sign into the AWS console, there are temporary credentials that get generated and that is what we will be using to authenticate to the AWS account. So whenever we create our AWS account, when we sign up to the AWS account, we begin with one single identity that has complete access to all the AWS services and all the AWS resources in the AWS account. So the first time when you sign up, to the AWS account, you begin with one single user. Now this identity, this single user, we call it as your AWS account root user. So this is nothing but your admin user. And this root user has full access. to so They can do whatever they want in the AWS account. And we can access this root user by making use of the email ID and the password that we use when we sign up to the AWS account. So, now, when we talk about your IAM users, now these are, these are not separate accounts, okay? These are not separate AWS accounts. These are basically users within the same AWS account. So you can think of it as your AWS as an application, and then we have different, different users who are accessing the same application. So your IAM users are not separate AWS accounts. So each user that you will be creating in AWS will have its own username, and they will have their own password that they can use to log in to the AWS management console, right? So you also have the option. So when we talk about your AWS, there are different different types of access you can give. So we can give the console access, we can give the programmatic access. So depending on the type of access that you're creating, you will be having different way of authenticating. So let's say you wanna uh, access AWS from the console, you have the username and password. Likewise, if you want to access AWS from CLI or via programs, you can make use of your programmatic access. Now, 
when we talk about the programmatic access we have something known as your access key and secret key that we will be using for authentication we will be talking more on that later on so you can also create individual access key for each users so that the users can make programmatic requests to work with the resources and the services in the AWS account. Now, whenever we are creating users using IAM, we are always granting those users long-term credentials to the AWS resources. And by default, whenever we create an IAM users, they have no permissions. All right. So unless you don't explicitly attach certain permissions to the users, the users cannot do anything in the AWS account. So they're not authorized to perform any AWS operations or to access any AWS resources. So you'll have to explicitly define the permissions. You'll have to explicitly set the permissions for that users. Only then they will be able to uh, take some actions or do some operations on the AWS services. So an advantage of having an individual IAM users is that you can assign permissions individually to each user. So so the main point of creating IAM users is to you can control which user uh, what they can access or what kind of permissions they can uh, get what they can do in the AWS account all that can be controlled by making use of this IAM user. So each IAM user account is associated with one and only one AWS account. So whenever we are creating your IAM users, it is restricted to one AWS account only. We cannot use the same IAM user in other AWS accounts. It will not work. It will only work in that specific AWS account. So because IAM users are defined within your AWS account, they do not need to have a payment method on file with AWS. So uh, you also have the billing that comes in when you when you start working with your AWS services and resources. Now, as a root user, all right, you will be responsible for all the uh, billing and the payment method. As an IAM user, I don't have to worry about the payment method. Everything will be going to the root user. So any AWS activity performed by IAM users in your account is built to your AWS account. So let's say you have 100 IAM users that you have created. Now any operations that will be done by these 100 users will be built to you, the root user account. All right, so you will have to bear the cost, you will have to pay the money. All right, so that's basically what your IAM users are. So once again, IAM users are not separate AWS accounts, they are users within the same account and you are basically creating the IAM users to give access to other users so that they can access your AWS account and they can start working with the AWS resources and the services in your AWS account. So that's your introduction to IAM users. That's all for this session. Thank you. Once again, before you leave, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you like the video, leave a like and please share the video.